when it speaks. Okay, so we're live. Good morning. It's a Thursday, June 25th, 1023. Sorry for the late start. We ran into a, a hiccup on being able to make the meeting go live. <clears throat> now we're up and running. Uh, it's Senate National I, I just, excuse me, I just spoke with uh, Rogers by phone. Um, he, if he doesn't make it in, it's, um, he appreciated being notified and um, he, he may or may not be in. He, he said he's, so that's the end of my message. Go live. Okay. Yep. Thank you for that extra step. Uh, we certainly want to make sure that everyone who's trying to attend uh, can attend if they want. And so I just received a text from Senator Rogers as well. He said uh, he'll be on soon. So thank you. Um, so with that, it's uh, Senate Natural Resources Senate Committee. It's June 25th. We're here to talk about Bill H716. Um, and uh, I want to start out with a thank you to uh, the participants who uh, it's rescheduled when our, our, our work earlier as a committee uh, bumped this meeting and we had to reschedule to today on two really quick things on housekeeping for the committee. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be taking up the migratory bird bill um, and also Senator Parent, you've been working on an amendment. Could you present that tomorrow, please? I think we're, we are yep. short of time. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so we're gonna to turn uh, to testimony. And I think, uh, I just wanted to say as we get started, um, two things, one, we have limited time. It's even more limited now that we've lost uh, some time to our electronic pick up. Um, and on top of that, uh, if we want to amend this bill, uh, we're going to need to take additional testimony, which will mean taking up the bill yet another day, which is entirely fine, uh, open to going either route. But if we do amend and need to take it up another day, and that will probably, we're attempting to, I think we're all attempting to adjourn Friday, two days from uh, tomorrow. Uh, that would mean we would finish our work in August. So I'm happy to follow the will of the committee, but I just want to say that if, if we're going to amend, we'll be working on this in August. Uh, otherwise, I think there's a reasonable opportunity to finish today. I'm not judging where we're going. Um, and the last thing before we turn to our, our witnesses is that I think it's really fitting in a spring where we're um, considering uh, past wrongs in our country that have led to problems that we're trying to address. Um, and one of the areas that uh, I think a sort of a deep and grievous wound in our country's history is the treatment of the original occupants of the land. So I'm glad that in one way, we are going to be looking at how we might um, acknowledge uh, some of that history and make some uh, progress in the right direction. And with that, I would like to turn to our council because we haven't formally uh, looked at the bill. So, uh, Mr. Chikowsky, if you could just do the walkthrough of the bill we have in hand, please. Sure. All right. Uh, H716, an act relating to Abenaki hunting and fishing licenses. This is a very short bill. So section one, we're in title 10, uh, 4255 license fees. So under sub C, a permanent or free hunting license may be secured on application to the department by a person qualifying as follows. A certified citizen of a Native American Indian tribe that has been recognized by the state pursuant to 1 VSA chapter 23 may receive a free permanent fishing license or if the person qualifies for a hunting license, a free permanent combination hunting and fishing license upon submission of a current and valid tribal <laughs> identification card. So uh, certified citizen of the recognized tribes may submit their uh, tribal identification card to the department and receive either a free permanent fishing license or if they qualify for a hunting license, a free combination license. Um, and then there's a report 
So on or before January 15, 2024, the Commissioner of Fish and Wildlife shall report to the House Committees on Nat Natural Resources, Fish and Wildlife, and the Senate Committee on Natural Resources and Energy, the number of licenses issued pursuant to this new section. And then the effective date is January 1, 2021. Great. Any commission, uh, committee questions on the bill itself? For <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Mr. Kowski. And with that, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Chief Don Stevens to the committee and ask you to talk to us about the bill and your thoughts. Yes, uh, first I'd like to thank the committee for taking this up because it's really important to our people and uh, to help with our food, uh, uh, to gather food for, for our family, especially during this time. And, uh, and it's also the right thing to do. Uh, in order to help with time, I prepared a testimony that I did provide um, to, to the committee, but I'll read it quickly for those who may have not seen it. And then I'll, I'll be uh, available for questions. So I'd like to kind of put things into perspective. Uh, there's kind of two separate issues here. There's our Abenaki rights, um, which most people have agreed is the right thing to do, uh, and funding for the Fish and Wildlife Department. Um, I agree that funding uh, for the Fish and Wildlife Department, um, um, I agree with the funding, uh, the department, because they, they do an important role. Uh, however, the funding discussion is more appropriate under a different bill like H.581, which is looking at ways to fund the department, uh, which specifically is, you know, addresses that issue. Uh, H716, I believe, should only deal with the Abenaki rights and our access to our food sources. Um, I would like to take a moment to explain what implicit bias is and how it affected discussions around this bill so far, just as a teaching moment. Um, that's all, not, not to offend anybody, but just as a teaching moment. <clears throat> implicit bias refers to attitudes and stereotypes that affect understanding, actions, and decisions in an unconscious manner. So amendments that were uh, provided in the House were submitted uh, that would have divided our people into categories and assert continued European dominance over our people, uh, using legislative power to determine which Abenaki should have rights and which ones shouldn't. Abenaki or Abenaki, no matter where they reside, all Abenaki have retained our rights through prior agreements and it is not proper for the state to try to divide our families based on geographical location. Luckily, this, amended, this uh, amendment was not adopted. Insinuations that Abenaki are some sort of social club where anybody can join to get a free license. Um, that, you know, we're a sovereign people and a sovereign government. We cherish our heritage and one must show their lineage to be a citizen of our tribe. We don't just give our heritage away just for a free license. Uh, we had to prove ourselves to the state of Vermont to gain our recognition as a people. Uh, I don't believe any European or other race had to go through this sort of process. So we ask that you give us a little dignity on how we function as a tribal government uh, and that we just don't give our culture away. Uh, it's kind of a disappointing when people use fear and scare tactics during testimony to limit ex Abenaki rights by theoretical financial concerns as a distraction especially when the same financial concerns are not expressed for white Europeans receiving free permanent licenses already. Uh, some try to convince themselves and others that new Abenaki licenses are uncontrolled losses of revenue to the Fish and Wildlife Department, when in fact, it was never part of their budget to begin with, and it is unrealized revenue, not a loss. Only actual current license holders would be a loss and why the Fiscal Budget Office estimated the $40,000 cost to the department, which the commissioner has already testified it is a minimal impact to his budget. Legislators uh, will know the real revenue loss when the commissioner submits his report in 2024, and legislators can adjust budgets accordingly. And then I put in, why, why is this important? Chief, pardon, yeah. pardon me. Could you pause just for a moment? Sure. Uh, Representative Lefebvre or Mr. Covey, uh, if you could mute your mics, we're getting a lot of noise uh, and it's getting hard to hear the chief speak, please. Thank you. You want me to go on? Yes, please. Sorry for okay. the interruption. So, so why is this important? I, I, I think we can all agree that at least 95% of Vermont is white European and hence 95% of all seniors are also white European. 
Over 121,000 seniors currently qualify for permanent hunting and fishing licenses, and 8,500 to 10,000 people turn 66 every year based on the Agency of Human Services website data. Seniors qualifying for free hunting and fishing licenses each year are double that of our entire Abenaki population. In 2018, the age for free hunting and fishing rights was dropped from age 70 to 66. So financial concerns over free licenses are not as big of a concern as being made out to be uh, in our bill. I doubt that the legislative body concentrates on the financial impact that seniors have on the Fish and Wildlife Department on a year to year basis and how that impacts federal dollars. It is because the state draws down the minimum amount of federal funding as a default because we are a small state. This has already been testified to in the house um, that it wouldn't affect federal funding. I ask that we receive at least the same rights as senior citizens now enjoy and that they get their free permanent hunting and fishing licenses. I ask the Senate to follow the House's lead. I ask you to support and pass H7-16 without delay so the governor can sign it. Our people have been waiting a long time for this moment. Uh, so it, it should be a simple thing. It's about our rights and, and the financial aspect should be looked at, like, like I said, with H581. So I'm here to take any questions or answer any concerns. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any committee questions for Chief Stephen? Okay. Thank um, you. Thank you for uh, sharing the data, which uh, I hadn't heard before about how many um, licenses, free licenses are issued based on age, uh, just age alone. It's not so much issued, uh, uh, it's who is eligible, like the Abenaki. Just because we have 4,000 potential people don't mean all 4,000 are going to be getting free licenses or, or whatever the case may be, just like seniors. Okay. Thanks again. Um, Representative Lefebvre, I'm not sure if you can hear me, um, but if you can, if you could just turn your microphone off until you're speaking with the committee, that would be helpful because there seems to be a lot of noise <laughs> It's a little hard to hear. Okay, um, with that, uh, if there are not any uh, questions for uh, Chief Stevens, then we'll go on to Mike Covey. Um, are, you are here, so you are up, sir. Uh, Mr. Oh. Chair, I'm just wondering, uh, can the uh, Chief, are you able to stay with us during the rest of this in case any other questions arrive? Absolutely. Great, thank you so much. Good morning, Mr. Covey. I see your tile on the screen. I don't know if you can hear us and uh, the floor is yours. Yes, I can hear and see you. Um, I'll keep it brief. Um, it sounds like the uh, concept of these additions would be a detriment to the bill and I don't have any interest in that. Um, in, you know, with respect to Chief Stevens and the Apple, I don't have any interest in slowing the bill. My thoughts with the email that I sent were that um, you know, per the commissioner's testimony in the house, hunting, trapping, and fishing were all considered licenses, and the rest of the are thought as a license. It made sense to include it in the same piece. Of um, but, you know, and I find it interesting that that the anti-hunting um, crowd that were was not consulted about the hunting portions, but. Um, you know, it's, it's been made clear that they will be consulted if trapping comes up. And as trapping is another form of hunting, I, think I find that interesting because we're not giving the avenue anything with this. We're simply doing what was agreed upon long before we were here. Uh, you know, we being you and I, not Europeans in general. Um, so I, I would submit that um, it's an interesting concept that uh, folks outside the tribe would be consulted on whether or not um, the Abenaki people should be allowed to trap. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Um, my thought on the adding the boat launch information or the boat launch language that Senator Rogers had drawn up was simply that I know there was some friction in the house about the potential cost to the department. And I felt that would offset it and possibly overcome it. Um, I believe since it looks like these two uh, conceptual amendments could slow down the bill um, I think that's all, all I have to say is an explanation of what my thoughts were. Um, I'll leave it to the committee, but I don't have any interest in slowing down the progress of this bill 
or keeping the Abenaki people from what's rightfully been theirs and, and been kept from them for far too long at this point. Okay, any committee questions for Mr. Covey? Uh, Senator Campion. I just wanted to, if I might, uh, just talk, uh, have another question for the chief. Chief, um, are you, are, did the original bill, is, is the trapping piece something that uh, you and uh, your people were advocating for, or was it uh, the hunting and fishing piece? Uh, we were advocating for the hunting and fishing piece because, uh, like I said, um, the trapping is a small part, and we know that it's very controversial, and it would cause a lot of people to try to shelve it or the bill because of the fact that um, it is a controversial issue. Uh, where hunting is more of a sustainable or subsistence type of, uh, you know, activity. It's not that we don't want it. It's the fact is when is the proper time to address it, right? Okay. I, I know the seniors, uh, citizens have the right to all big game tags and uh, under the permanent license and also all hunt, you know, trapping and all that stuff. Um, you know, if the Fish and Wildlife Department decides to put us in the same category as the seniors, except that we don't have to pay for it, then it's already something that maybe the department can do as a, um, just, just as a uh, part of their policy. I don't know. But if we, if we can't, then I, I would think we would come back uh, once we get our hunting and fishing licenses, we can always come back at it another time when it's, when there's not the COVID situation and there's more time to talk. I, about. I, I appreciate that very much. And I'm sorry if I missed that in your uh, other comments. So thank you. Well, and just for the committee, um, Commissioner Porter was already scheduled to be away. So that's why we spent, we had a brief visit with him when he was, before he left. And that was earlier in the week, but he's not able to be with us today to talk about, you know, sort of a deeper dive on hunting licenses, provisions, trapping, et cetera. Uh, Senator Parent. I, I just want to say, and it kind of falls where Mike is, I, I do wish we could give um, trapping in this bill. I understand trying to avoid controversy, but I, I think it's sad that, you know, giving native Vermont, you know, native people who are here before us a right to do something they did before Europeans arrived um, is, is controversial, but it's the way the building works. I don't think, I think this is, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chair, it's just a question now of if we were to move in that direction, we just have to take more testimony and it might not get out today or tomorrow. Well, and my thing is from who? Like we already well, allowed tra think, trapping very legal in Vermont. I think we need to hear really from the commissioner again. I think, you know, I, I, to me, I don't want to make those kinds of decisions without the commissioner and hearing from other people. And as the chief said, you know, whether, you know, folks like it or not, it has been controversial. So we do, we want to be inclusive in this conversation. And the question is now, do we move move this piece or do we do we wait? And uh, I, that's a decision. That no, I, I think we do move it. But my point is, is this shouldn't be a controversial thing to move through this, through our building. Sounds Sorry. like we have agreement. I think, yeah, I think we're. Okay. Thank you. Um, and so thank you. Then I'm looking back to our witness list. Uh, I don't see Attorney General Donovan here. We do have a letter from him that uh, committee members could consult. He Senator made, Ray, he he said he couldn't be available until eleven thirty. Right, right. So, um, so we'll go on to our other witnesses. If we're still here at eleven thirty, then he can join us. Uh, if we have finished our work for the day, which is possible, because we're sleeping up at twelve, um, then we have his written testimony. Which, uh, is quite clear. All right, so with that, I'd like to turn to Representative Brennan. Good morning, Representative Brennan. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, you know where we are in this conversation. What would you like to share with the committee, please? Well, I, uh, I was thinking you had questions for me. Um, I didn't ask to take part in this, but I'm happy to be here. And I, uh, I did have an amendment on in the on the House side on this bill, um, but um, as things go, and and I researched this a little more. I had a long chat with the chief um, about uh, 
two or three weeks ago now, I think, Chief. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've come to a place where I can um, accept this. I, was, I had concerns about out-of-state um, um, tribal members getting a, a free license of Vermont, but uh, I think that's going to be a minimal impact. Um, and after, and I had a, I had serious considerations about loss of revenue, and, and it's not a, a huge loss of revenue. It's it's minor, but um, I've been I've been a little overzealous at times in protecting um, fish and wildlife revenues. Uh, did so with the uh, Salisbury Fish Hatchery, which was scheduled to close, and uh, we brought the the hunting and fishing community together to increase licenses back then. So um, that's where I come from in this. I, I in no way, and I'm sure some of the um, the members of the these different tribes might think I was trying to sabotage the bill but it was all about funding for me. And I think we can do that at a later date in another bill. Um, as Chief Stevens said earlier, uh, it's gonna take a little bit of, uh, that's fairly controversial in itself. So I think that should probably remain separate at this time, but I look forward to that discussion. Um, basically that's where I, that's where I am. Uh, um, Ellen mentioned uh, my amendment, but I had not, ask for that to be introduced and uh, prefer that you don't consider it uh, at this time. That's not why I'm, I'm, he I'm here because I was asked by the chair to be here and be happy to answer questions. Sure, okay. Well, thank you for those clarifications. <laughs> and just for the sake of making uh, it simple, I, I consulted with the commissioner who has now joined the call. Uh, it was- yeah. It was my understanding he was away on vacation, but um, I appreciate his connecting with the meeting, even if he is away on vacation. Um, He's taking care of his baby, just so you know. Okay. Um, a lot of us have assistance. Uh, the, um, so th that was how uh, uh, you ended up being invited. I talked to the commissioner. I said, I looked at the witness list and he said, well, here, I'll help you. Um, look through the list and we drew up another list for today. So that's that's the origin of that. I appreciate your work on the Salisbury his, uh, fish hatchery um, and, uh, and your committee, uh, this committee shares your um, concerns around making sure that we adequately fund fish and wildlife. For instance, there is a uh, an Act 250 housing bill that will be making its way back to the house uh, and amended H926. And in it, there's a bill back provision to help uh, fund fish and wildlife for the or refund them for the roughly two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of work they do on behalf of Act Fifty. So um, we're sensitive that we uh, to their budget as well and want to support uh, a robust department. Um, okay, so thank you for that. We we won't be considering uh, as you suggest. We won't consider that amendment. And thank you for coming in and speaking with us. Uh, we hope you can stay on if you want. Uh, and then uh, our last scheduled witness then, uh, well, not quite, second to last is uh, Representative Lefebvre. Um, are you able to hear us? And we're hoping we're gonna be able to hear you. And his tile is dark. Okay. Uh, so I see Ms. Clark from the Attorney General's office. Um, I don't know if, if your being here suggests that the Attorney General is good morning. Um, I don't know if your being here tells us that close at hand is the Attorney General or you're here to provide testimony on his behalf. Um, the attorney general had another commitment, which is why he wasn't available until 1130. So I was just watching on, on the YouTube channel. When I saw that you were thinking of moving ahead, I just wanted to join and be available if anyone had any questions. I know he wanted to testify himself. Um, he's been very enthusiastic and su uh, supportive of this bill. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I was available in case there were any questions. We also just, we've already, oh, sorry, Senator. 
I, let me just note that we had provided um, once again the letter that we'd sent on the chair back in February, I think, when we initially had, um, I think we had a press conference about this bill and testified on the House side. So we resent that so it was available. It just has a little bit of, you know, if you had legal questions, um, you wanted to make sure that we, you know, answered those there. So those really haven't come up since then, but I wanted to make sure that that you folks had that um, that letter handy if you needed it. Right, thank you. And I think it's on our website and distributed to uh, committee members. Um, all right, so if you can stand, uh, uh, Senator Perrin. Uh, I just wanted to thank Charity and, and the Attorney General for bringing this um, cause up. I think it's really great. Just one question I have, and, and it kind of goes to Representative um, Brennan's is, have you guys thought of any ways potentially we could help offset uh, revenue losses for uh, the Fish and Wildlife Department without um, raising you know hunting fees on other folks I, I know the ag was pretty instrumental in this so i don't know if you put any thought into that yeah um, oh go ahead representative oh were you was that for me no it's for the ag's office but oh, okay yeah I understand that this did come up, up on the House side. Um, the Attorney General emphasized he felt that it was the right thing to do and that the financial impact appeared to be de minimis based on the numbers that Chief Stevens has. And also, I mean, as, as the Chief referenced earlier, we, we do have a mm -hmm. Um, a very a broad category of folks who are who have el eligibility, which is the seniors um, category, and I I'm not sure there was a lot of hand wringing over that, um, but it does feel like it's the right thing to do, um, and we it's presumably not all 4,000 would take advantage of this, and and we also have to keep in mind this isn't um, I'm I'm guessing the number although at least when I was following this on the house side the commissioner had not been able to provide any numbers about this, but it's, um, you know, the fi fiscal impact of course is only to those folks who currently are paying for this and then won't be. You know, many who take advantage are probably aren't paying for this right now. So it's not an actual loss. Okay, thanks. Right, and I think, uh, Senator Parent, are you alluding to the idea that there's a, uh, I don't know, I don't know what you call the proper name of it, a litigation fund or something like that. Yeah. I was seeing if there was any way to, you know, the AG's office might be able to help support the department. Because I, I agree with this bill 100%. I'm not trying to slow it down. It's just in my mind, I know we've seen trends where hunting licenses are going down in the state of Vermont, unfortunately. And even the senior provision, I think they have to pay $60 for that for the rest of their lives. So they still have, they pay something. And I just, I just want to make sure hunting was an important part of me growing up. I don't do it as much now, but I plan to when my son gets older and some of the best time I spent with my dad and, and other family members was in the woods. It wasn't so much the hunting, it was that time together. So I just wanna make sure we're protecting this for all Vermonters too, as we move forward. Um, you know, it's, it's a real asset and, and real community building. And, and I'm glad we're doing this, um, but didn't know if there was, you know, a way to use the litigation fund to help support our fish and wildlife um, group. So I can't speak directly to the litigation fund in that it's our assistant AG, Josh Diamond, who handles the budget stuff from our office. But, um, you know, we put our budget together for what we need, but we actually, you know, produce a lot of dollars because of litigation and settlements that we have. And of course the appropriations committees get to decide how that's spent. So um, I just, you know, make that note that it, it really is the appropriations committee, especially because this wouldn't be involved, our budget wouldn't be involved. Okay. All right. Uh, Senator Campion. Uh, well, Senator Parent, do you have anything more? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Senator Campion. Uh, this is a question actually for Representative Brennan, hopefully. Uh, do you know, Pat, did this go to another committee? I'm just thinking about timing. In the House, did this, was it just uh, natural or did it have to go to a probes or anywhere else? Because it, it did go to Ways and Means briefly. We took a look at it and uh, okay. yeah. So that's probably a likely path. So we should probably try to, if we can, kick it out soon this morning so that we can see it in finance this afternoon if need be. Okay. I, Thank um, you. Go yeah. ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I, I don't know if that's necessary. I mean, it's, okay. uh, it, it, it flew by us so, so quickly that it's, it's in the, the, uh, the ramifications are so minute that I, I really don't think 
I mean, I'm not going to tell you how to operate your committee by any means, but I don't think that's necessary. Right. Well, so I can, you know, the, one other way to handle this is that I contact Chair Cummings directly, talk to her about it. Um, the, um, as I saw the numbers, I think uh, Commissioner Porter estimated perhaps a tax expenditure of something in the order of $30,000 against a $23 million budget. That's one tenth of 1%. So. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to minimize that it's real money, uh, but it's uh, the scale of it is certainly modest enough that uh, we may be able to have a quick visit uh, with finance and keep on moving. Would be my hope. I, I know there are many people who would like to see us be able to send this to the governor's desk before we adjourn for the summer. So I'm trying to honor that while also uh, making sure that we don't preclude any other considerations that people want to put on the table while we're gathered today. Um, well, again, worst case scenario, I think, as long as we voted out this morning, I, I think we talk to the chair. If he wants to see it, we're meeting this afternoon. So. Right. Um, okay. And so, uh, Commissioner Porter, uh, I, you've been listening in. Uh, I don't know if you had any comments you wanted to share. Be, uh, if, if you wanted to we, we've spoken already, but you've heard this morning, some of this morning's conversation. I don't know if you want to say anything about, I think the question before us is, do we stick with the bill we have or do we try to make changes? Sure, certainly. And I apologize if uh, May chimes in here. Um, I was watching your uh, your your uh, meeting on uh, on YouTube because I'm on baby duty today, but I, see you had, I thought you might have questions for me, so I'd join. No, as you know, we're supportive of the bill. Um, and uh, and would like to see it move forward. Um, and uh, 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 Senator Parent made, made the point I was going to uh, clarify there that seniors do pay sixty dollars for a permanent license. But no, we would like to see the move, bill move forward. And happy to uh, uh, answer any questions or to answer any questions if it does go to the Finance Committee uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So it is my sense that um, let me check with the committee that. Um, there's an interest in moving the bill and the way and, and a timely way and, and the way that we do that is to not amend the bill. Um, and so let me just see if my colleagues agree. Our people in, let me straw poll, who is, who's in favor of moving the bill as currently before us? I'd like to make a motion, uh, Mr. Chair, to concur with the House bill uh, and advance this. Okay. Um, is there any further discussion? Okay. Then um, I would ask, well, I see council. Uh, do you have anything you want to offer before we proceed to a vote? Um, you have heard a lot about the bill today. I wanted to just add, you. your committee does hear about fish, uh, hunting and fishing licenses pretty regularly, but this just to reiterate my testimony in the house, we're not creating a new um, program at all. Um, they have to follow the requirements of obtaining a hunting license. So that's not changing. And they will have to abide by all of the regular um, laws governing hunting and fishing. So just adding this to a new cat as a new category of available licenses. And I did want to add briefly, um, the add on licenses are not included. So there will be some um, fees need to be that will need to be purchased for uh, the second archery license, a moose, uh, the antlerless deer, and additional water, waterfowl stamps, and potentially the other big game um, license. So it's we're, there are some things that will need to be purchased in addition. Okay, Senator Perry. Why did the House decide to, to go there? I guess I didn't understand that. I mean, it's something we can work on later on in the process with trapping, but I'd soon let them get, allow Native uh, folks in the Abnaki to get all of all of their hunting and fishing requirements uh, free of cost. Um, they did take testimony and discuss it at length. I think in order to be sensitive to some of the budget concerns, this would be sort of... Um, a modest amount that would need to be paid for the additional add-ons and would provide some revenue to the department. Okay. Um, Chief Stevens, please. Uh, 
muted. Hey, sorry, I had to, I had to get to the mic. Uh, I just I, I'm assuming that as a matter of policy, if this passes anyway as a permanent license, it would be the same as the senior citizens that they get. I mean, they get um, a combination of hunting and fishing rights, the archery, the big game. You know, they have they they also have to uh, pay for moose and second deer tag and turkey and that stuff. So I'm assuming that as a matter of policy that we would fit into the same category as the senior citizens. And I believe that the, the license fee for the senior citizen is a $60 one time payment. Yeah. It's not like every year they have to pay $60. I think it's a one time. The only difference is we wouldn't pay that one time fee. But I would hope we'd be put in the same category and the same rights as the senior citizens do. Uh, that's all I'm saying. So uh, we still get we still get to be able to get our deer and you know, I mean, we can always go back to the till for other things later, um, but at least get us the same rights as senior citizens have. Anyway, I just want to say that. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Council, can you uh, just reconfirm for the committee that that is the, we're providing the, the equivalent um, benefit? Yes. Okay. All right. With that, I'd say, is there any further committee discussion? Um, Senator Rogers asked me if I shoot him a text, he can make it for the vote. So I just want to, if we can pause for 30 yeah, seconds. I, yeah, I sent him a text and I've called okay. him. Okay. Thank you, Thank Jude. You. I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, Senator Rogers, can you go to video? Because when we vote, we also have to have video. Yes, I've got a little bit spotty reception, but I think it'll carry. All right. There you are. We see you. So with that, then um, is there a motion call the roll? The table? Yeah. So the motion is to concur with the House proposal of H seven one six. If there is no further discussion, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Senator McDonald. Yes. Uh, Senator Parent. Yes. Senator Rogers. Yes. Senator Campion. Yes. Senator Bray. Yes. All right. So five that's zero. Five zero zero. Uh, would anyone like to report the bill? Okay. Uh, I, I'm happy to, I, if no one else wants to. I thought maybe this was something that was important to Senator Rogers in particular, but um, I, I know he's. A... John, do you want to report this or do you want me to? Yeah, it, it, it is, but I don't feel like I have time to properly prepare to. Okay. No, I would I would assume you did, as I, I don't feel like I have the time to give it its due uh, diligence. Okay. All right. So, Senator Campion, will report. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, so, we are, that was really uh, it for business for today. Um, so, I, again, tomorrow we will turn to the Migratory Bird Bill. Um, and Senator Parent, if you can tee up our amendment on 926, uh, that would be very good. Thank you. Ellen, and, would you mind just sending me anything you've got, any little thing you might have on this bill? I know it's brief, but if you've got anything, just email it to me. That'd be great. Um, anything that you think I need to know. Um, and I believe I need to send that to the Senate please. Secretary ASAP. So I'm not sure if Jude, are you involved with that process? And, and Chief Stevens, just a moment, we'll get to you. Thank I'm you. not. I'm not allowed to bring bills yeah. to. Oh, I understand. But what's the pro? What do we do from here? You, you, you send it. I believe to the secretary with right. the vote count and okay. the bill. So, Ellen, do you send email? Us, send me the bill, and then I send it. Yes, that's okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Clean copy from you to the Senate Secretary, <clears throat> who is reporter, and the vote. And, that's and you're just perfect. concurring, so it'll yeah. be simple. Okay. Thank you. Um, the other thing is, so I will uh, reach out to uh, uh, Chair Cummings and have a discussion with her about it and see um, how we might facilitate keeping this thing moving right along. All right. Uh, uh, Chief Stevens, you had something you wanted to share. Yeah, I just want to say on behalf of the, I know Nalhegan at a minimum and, and the Abenaki people, we really appreciate you helping helping us uh, with our rights and, and, and passing this at a committee. I'm hoping it passes the Senate and gets to the governor's desk. But I just want to say that I really, really appreciate, um, if you do nothing else, you know that you've made a difference in an entire uh, 
disadvantaged population to help us. So uh, you can be proud of that. And I want to thank Senator Brennan for also uh, having our discussions and, and understanding where we're coming from. So I just want to really say thank you because uh, it means a lot. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. And, and thank you to everyone for uh, your good humor and flexibility uh, in terms of convening and reconvening uh, and uh, helping us move this along in a timely way. So with that, uh, unless any other, if there's no other committee members wanting to check in on anything, we have completed our business for the day and we are adjourned. Um, Senator McDonald. Um, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, on, not on not on this bill, just uh, um, I'm reporting uh, the, the uh, House um, climate bill. And yes. I just, I don't have a list of witnesses at my disposal. And I don't know if Jude has a, a, a list. She might be able to um, email me. So I can um, at least refer to the many, many people who came in to testify on that bill. Okay. Or um, on that issue. On that issue. I, can, I can email you the list that's in the, uh, internet for sure. Thank you very much. Anything else before we wrap up? Okay, so thanks again, everyone. Uh, we are adjourned.